You probably noticed when you tell a dog to stay or to sit, it gets very tense. A sitting position that it would normally take without any, any problem suddenly becomes unbearable. It squiggles and it squirms. Well, the mind is like that. You tell it to stay with the breath and it's going to squiggle and squirm around the breath. And because it's so tense around the breath, it can't maintain this position for long. This is why John Lee teaches working with the breath, playing with the breath. See what different kinds of breathing there are and which ways of breathing have the best effect on the body, best effect on the mind. Gives you something to explore, something to get interested in, something to get intrigued about. Something as simple as a breath can have such an impact on your health, the body, the mood of the mind. And as you get interested in it, you find that you're staying with the breath without having to think about it. So ask yourself questions. This is what attention is all about. In the Buddha's vocabulary, the word attention means just that, which questions you pay attention to. He never taught bare attention because there are no bare questions. You're thinking about trying to put an end to suffering. They're either questions that are appropriate or questions that are not appropriate. Inappropriate questions have to do with things like, what is the nature of the world? Is it eternal, not eternal, finite, infinite? Did it start at one point in time, or has it been going on for eternity? Does it have a creator? How about you? Who are you? What are you? Do you exist? Do you not exist? What were you in a previous lifetime? What are you going to be in a previous future one? Or were you in a previous lifetime? Was there such a thing? It's interesting, interesting the Buddha puts all those into inappropriate questions to ask, even though he does teach about rebirth, past lifetimes and future lifetimes. The question of whether it was you in that past lifetime or you in the future lifetime or not, that, he says, don't pay any attention to. Because however you answer these questions, they're going to pull you into what he calls a thicket and a writhing of views. The questions that are worth asking are questions about stress, the cause of stress. Is there such a thing as a cessation of stress? And if so, how can it be brought about? Those questions are worthwhile. And so as you're working with the breath, your question is, am I creating any unnecessary stress in the body, unnecessary stress in the mind by the way I breathe? That's getting you started on the right questions, on appropriate attention. So try to bring some appropriate attention to your breath, not just bare attention, appropriate attention. Asking some questions about it. That way you'll find that you can achieve a balance around the breath that's much more natural, whether or not you're having to clamp down. Now, for a while, that will be what keeps you with the breath, is that thinking at what the Buddha calls direct to thought and evaluation. But you get to the point where the breath is comfortable, as, or as comfortable as it's going to be, and its effect on the body is as comfortable as it's going to be. And no matter how much more you try to adjust it, you can't make it any better. And John Fuhring's image is of putting water in a big water jar. You pour it in, pour it in, pour it in, finally the jar is full. Now you could keep pouring water in if you wanted to, but it, was, it would it'd all spill out. The jar can hold only that much. This is where the next skill in the concentration is learning how to put the direct of thought and evaluation aside and just try to be with the breathing.
this creates a different relationship with the breath. On the one hand, you have the sense that your awareness of the breath and the breath are one thing. Or you are one with the breath. And you try to maintain your balance with a minimum amount of directed thought and evaluation. You don't have to direct your thoughts anymore because you're there with the breath, but then the evaluation here becomes more subtle. Subtle in the sense you have to ask yourself, how can I maintain my sense of balance here? Because it's very easy to tip into the past or tip into the future and lose your balance. In other words, you start pushing to what's next, what next, what's next, and you fall off the breath. Or do you try to latch on to the sensation of your last breath, which just creates unnecessary tension in the body. You want to maintain this sense of balance. And in the beginning you have a very strong sense of how fragile it is. You don't want to rush into the next breath. You want to be right here with this breath, but be very, very much right here, this moment, this moment, this moment. And pare down the length of each moment as much as you can. And you'll find that it, things begin to solidify there in that very present moment. And you lose that sense that you're going to fall off. You feel more secure here. It's like learning how to walk a tightrope. In the beginning, it's very easy to fall off. But as you get more and more confident and get a better and better sense of your own instinctive sense of balance, bring it to bear, you find that it gets easier and easier, and the amount of tension can be, be relaxed. And just there with the breath. There'll be a sense of fullness and a sense of ease. But your main concern is to be with the breath. One of the worst things you can do is leave the breath to go to the fullness and the ease. It's like building a building and then seeing that there's a cloud around the building. The, the cloud looks nice and soft, and so you go jump into the cloud, and of course you fall right through. The ease will do its work. You don't have to wallow in it. You don't have to gulp it down. It'll do its work on the body. It'll do its work on the mind. You're just trying to maintain your sense of balance with the breath. Now, in some cases, that sense of fullness will be very mild, and as it goes away, you hardly even notice it. Other times it's stronger, to the point where it gets excessive. That's when you tune the mind into a more subtle frequency of the breath. In the same way that you would tune a radio into a more calming station after listening to a lot of hard rock. And you find that the mind can settle in there. The mind itself is equanimous, there's a sense of, a sense of ease in the body. And that gradually grows fainter and fainter until everything just stops. The breath stops. Your thinking stops. There's just the perception that holds you there. There's a sense of awareness filling the whole body. The breath fills the whole body. And it's because everything feels connected inside that the breathing can stop and you don't feel any lack. You don't feel a need to breathe. Sometimes you may find this startling. And as soon as a, a startled thought goes through the mind, you have to start breathing again. But if you remind yourself that whatever oxygen the body needs has been greatly reduced, as your brain is the main user of oxygen, in the sense of the breath filling the body, everything feels connected. So if there's a lack anywhere, it's immediately made up. 
from someplace else. Whatever oxygen you need is being picked up through the skin. Breath energy fills the body. But without a sense of being stuffed by it, it just feels very natural and very balanced. And this is how you get the mind to stay. You don't clamp down. But at the same time, you're not too lackadaisical. Again, you're, it's like training a dog. If you don't train the dog at all, it's just going to make a big mess. You have to ride herd on it. Keep watch over it. But at the same time, you don't beat it, you don't force it down. To change the image, it's just like training a child. You give the child something to work with, something to play with. The child doesn't think of running away because it's fascinated by the game, fascinated by the work you've given it. And when it's tired of playing, then it can rest. The difference here being, of course, when you're resting, you're fully awake, fully alert. alert. But there's no felt need to think about anything much at all. Because you're getting strength from this. There's a sense of strong nourishment that comes when the mind settles down. A sense of lightness, openness. This is how you get the mind to stay, in such a way that it can stay for long periods of time. And the advantage of learning this skill is that you can give the mind a rest. We think so much as we go through the day. We take in so much information. And so much greed, aversion, and delusion gets aroused. Or not only gets aroused, but also goes out looking for trouble. And all that in and out, in and out, wears down the mind. So here you're trying to give the mind a place of balance, right here, right in the middle of everything, but not feeling besieged by anything at all. Instead, you're radiating a sense of well-being. This heals whatever scars you picked up from the day. It gives you the strength both to keep on going and to keep on going well.